It is senior night. Ian Garcia and his parents have just been introduced, and we're going to let you listen in to Chris Wolsey announces that. Ian will be attending Texas State Technical School to fulfill his dream of becoming a pilot. To his parents, he said, thank you guys for believing in me in hard times, especially this year after undergoing Tommy John surgery and helping me turn my dreams into reality. Next up, number three, Austin Garcia. Same parents, Melissa and Russell Garcia. Austin will be attending Texas State to further his education. I want to say thank you so much for pushing me and helping me every step of the way through this long journey. Next up, number five, Ethan Becker. Parents Summer and Brian Becker. Ethan will be attending Texas A&M and studying engineering. Thank you for always supporting me and always seeing the best in me. Next up tonight, number 25, Adam Vaughn. Parents Catherine and Earl Vaughn. Adam will be attending Texas A&M Corpus Christi to play baseball and major in criminal justice. Thank you for always supporting my baseball journey no matter what. Next up, number 12, Caleb Rhodes, accompanied by mom, Crystal Willis. Caleb will be attending college and wants to say thank you for teaching me tenacity. Next up, number 16, Murray Robinson. Parents Susan and MJ Robinson, tell me what can you get for a pork chop? And Father Todd Robinson, Murray will be attending Angelo State University as a football player and majoring in business. He wants to say to his parents, I love y'all with all my heart. Thank you for the sacrifice and dedication you put into me for the 18 years. Next up, number 21, Christian Pickens, accompanied by Mary and John Pickens and brother Brady. Christian will be attending West Texas Junior College on a baseball scholarship to his parents. First, I'd like to thank my parents for the countless amount of time they have spent with me at the ballpark, for the scorching hot 10 hour days in the summer to the little things like going up to the field to throw and hit with me. Thank you, mom and dad, for allowing me to play the game I love and always supporting me no matter the circumstances. It means the world to me. I wouldn't be able to play at the next level or be the man I am today without y'all. And like I said, I can't thank y'all enough. And for my brother, because I know he wants me to say something about him, thank you for teaching me how to be a big brother and a leader all in one. There's never a dull moment with you around, even through all the fights and arguments we've gotten into over the dumbest stuff, like who's the better athlete, even though you know you got all your skills from watching me but don't want to admit it. Anyways, this hurts to say, but keep on doing what you're doing. You're on your way to being great, and in four years, I can't wait to come back to see you signing to play at, the, at your dream school. 
Next up, number 22, Houston Molinaro. Parents Don and David Molinaro. Houston will be attending Penn State University and majoring in finance with an emphasis on investment banking and commercial real estate. To his parents, he says, thank you for the past 18 years of support. Having two parents who have nothing but a strong work ethic and high expectations has allowed me to look up to both of you as role models. Next up, number 23, Logan Vokes. Parents, Darla and Joe Vokes. He will also be attending Texas State Technical College and pursuing his pilot's license. To his parents, thank you for always pushing me to become the best person on and off the field. Thank you for being by my side through it all, the easy and the rough. I love y'all. Next up, number 24, Julian Swift. Parents, Heather and James Swift. Julian's currently undecided on his college commitment as he weighs his college baseball options. He wants to say a special thanks to mom and dad for being such great role models in my life and for making me who I am today. Next up, number 26, Jackson Harvey. Parents Amy and Richard Harvey and brother Marshall. Jackson will be attending Stephen F. Austin to study kinesiology. He wants to say to his parents, thank you for always coming to all my games and being the best supporters. Next up, trainer Morgan Garrett. Parents Amanda and John Garrett. Morgan will be attending Southwestern University to study kinesiology. To her parents, she said, Dear Mom and Dad, thank you for your hard work over the years. It doesn't go unnoticed. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating all of our senior players on a successful baseball season and your accomplished baseball careers. And thank you parents, family, friends, and students for coming tonight to honor them and enjoy tonight's game. Good luck to everyone in the game. Go Timberwolves! And you can see the Timberwolves seniors and their parents and family members who escorted them tonight gathering behind home plate. Camera looking right at us as they look out to get the group shot. Senior night here at Jay Severe Field, Matt Ariano Park. But about 13 minutes before 7, we went live a little bit early, normally at about 10 till, because this was senior night and I wanted to get the, the tributes to these seniors in. Once again, they are Ian Garcia, his brother Austin, Ethan Becker, Caleb Rhodes, uh, Murray Robinson, Christian Pickens, Houston Molinaro, Logan Vokes, Julian Swift, Adam Vaughn, and Jackson Harvey. Boy, are we going to miss those guys. But a bunch of good young talent will return next year. Keep this going. Oh, they're talking about me. Congratulations and appreciation to Brad Cohn, who celebrated his 300th broadcast this Tuesday at our game against Rouse. Family, friends, and fans have all tuned in over the years to hear the voice of the Timberwolves provide the play-by-play -play for Cedar Park High School. Coach Williams said, I'd like to thank Brad for covering all CPHS athletic teams and with the passion in which he does it. I feel like he's the voice of our athletic department.
please join me in congratulating Brad Cohn on his 300th broadcast. Well, isn't that nice? Folks give me a smattering of applause and I wave back at him. Yeah, this is game 301 and starting and tonight. We have one more honoree tonight. Brad Davis giving me Root President of the Booster Club giving me a little Pierce, present. I'll have to open it during the broadcast. We'll see what that happens to be. Grayson Pierce, the bat boy, son of Mr. Pierce, one of the assistant principals here, saluting him as well here. It's our last regular season home game. Uh, very well likely may have at least a home game in the first round of the playoffs, sometimes even the second. Ladies and gentlemen, I almost forgot. We have one more birthday celebration. Today is my counterpart here in the booth's birthday, our baseball booster club treasurer, Mr. Brad Davis. Oh, Brad Davis' birthday today. We're going to refer to this age as levels because saying level 48 sounds much cooler than the other. So happy right. birthday, Mr. Brad Davis. All right, we're about ready to go. Here come the umpires. And interestingly, just like the other night in Rouse, kind of a surprise there, maybe a surprise here. Four umpires tonight. That's what you normally get at the state tournament. It's normally two in the regular season. It will often go to three in the playoffs. Doesn't get to four till you get to the final two rounds normally. But four the other night at Rouse and four here tonight. Proceeds from tonight's concessions go directly back into the baseball program via our baseball booster club. If you're not a member of the baseball booster club, please visit our website, cphswolvesbaseball.com, to become a member. And we thank you for your support. So good evening, everyone. Welcome home, Cedar Park, Texas. This is Timberwolf Baseball tonight, live worldwide broadcast of Cedar Park Baseball on the Vipe Network. I'm the V of the T, Brad Cohn, Shane Showinski, our QA tonight. Thanks for joining us, Shane. With all other district action behind us now and sifting out all the standings and possibilities, it turns out that this is the district championship game. Timberwolves face the Georgetown Eagles, and the winner here will take the district crown. The last several games, Cedar Park is the only team whose fate was in its own hands, needing no help from anyone to win the title. They still don't. Georgetown needed help, and they've gotten it. Their wins and some other teams' losses have put the Eagles into a position where tonight they need no help either. Whichever team wins this game takes the district title and the number one playoff seed. And to add to what's already at stake here tonight, Cedar Park has a score to settle, not necessarily with Georgetown, but with themselves. They had the Eagles crushed three weeks ago on the road, leading 7-1 to one late in the game, but they let their heel off of Georgetown's throat and somehow managed to lose that game by a run. Timberwolves are determined that won't happen again. They intend to become the first Cedar Park baseball team ever to win back-to-back -back district baseball crowns. This game, the 301st broadcast of Cedar Park baseball on KMAX Sports for the Vibe Live Network since starting 15 seasons ago in 2008. We've won 191 of those. Cedar Park going for all-time win number 421 here in their 23rd season of varsity play overall. It'll be the 215th career win for head coach Lanny Williams. His record at Cedar Park, a good one, 55 and 23 overall, 22 and 6 in district, 4 and 1 in the playoffs, and all of those winning percentages are the best of any Cedar Park baseball coach ever. Weather for Cedar Park, Texas, this evening currently mostly cloudy, but the sun is peeking out from the west as it starts to set. Windy. 80 degrees dropping to about 70 by game's end, maybe the high 60s. Humidity 57%, a 20% chance of rain with these clouds in the area. Wind from the south at 12, that means, as usual, blowing in from left field. I haven't been able to monitor the email last couple games. I will tonight, via the T at gmail.com, if you want to send your messages there. District 25, 5A roundup scores from Tuesday, Liberty Hill 7, Georgetown 3, Marble Falls 17, Eastview 16, Marble Falls 3 in a row, 4 of 5, uh, I got that score wrong, Georgetown 7, Liberty Hill 3, 
Uh, Leander 8, Glenn 3, and of course you saw right here on Vibe, Cedar Park 5, Rouse 3. Makes the current records and standings look like this. Cedar Park on top at 10 and 3. Three teams, one game back of them, Liberty Hill, Rouse, and Georgetown at 9 and 4. Leander out of the playoffs at 7 6. So is Marble Falls at 4 and 9. But Marble Falls has won three in a row and four of their last five. Uh, Glenn is at 3 and 10. Eastview, the tail end, Charlie at 1 and 2. Now, looking at the playoff possibilities. All four playoff slots are clinched. Any of those four could still win the district crown. The Cedar Park's the only one that can win it outright. With the Timberwolf loss tonight, the crown would be shared by two, three, or even four teams, and tiebreaker scenarios would have to be engaged. Other district games tonight. Three and ten Glenn at nine and four Liberty Hill. Nine and four Rouse at four and nine Marble Falls. 1-12 Eastview at 7-6 Leander. The season ends tonight for Glen, Eastview, Marble Falls, and Leander. Let's look at the most likely outcomes for these other three games. Liberty Hill should beat Glen. Rouse should beat Marble Falls. Eastview versus Leander doesn't matter. If Cedar Park loses to Georgetown, if these other outcomes do occur, all four playoff teams will be tied at 10-4. and four. Compare head-to-head, -head, Cedar Park beats Rouse, beat Rouse twice, Liberty Hill twice, and will have lost to Georgetown twice, so they're 4-2. Georgetown would be 2-0 against Cedar Park, but just 1-1 one one against both Rouse and Liberty Hill, thus also 4-2. Liberty Hill will be 0-2 oh against Cedar Park, but 1-1 one one against both Georgetown and Rouse, so they're 2-4. Rouse would be 0-2 against Cedar Park and 1-1 one one against both Liberty Hill and Georgetown, so also 2-4. That ties Georgetown and Cedar Park at the top at 4-2 and two each, and Georgetown wins the direct comparisons because in that case they will have beaten us twice. Liberty Hill and Rouse could either play each other tomorrow for third or flip a coin. So there's the tail of the tape tonight. All four playoff spots are taken by the teams you would have expected at the beginning of the season. Cedar Park, Liberty Hill, Rouse, and Georgetown. No order yet on the order that they finish in the stands or in seating. And what I said a moment ago is what happens when the Cedar Park lost tonight. A Cedar Park win clears things up remarkably. That would put Cedar Park at 11-3 and three on top as the outright district champs. Let's say Liberty Hill and Rouse win their games as they should. They would both finish one game back at 10-4, and four, tied for second. Since they split their home-and-home home series this year, they would still need to either play each other tomorrow or flip a coin to see who gets the two seed and who gets the three. Georgetown would finish 9-5 and five, and alone in fourth place is the number four seed. As to who our 25-5A 1 through 4 seeds would play, looking at 26-5A standings coming into tonight, New Braunfels Canyon has clinched the title at 13-3. and three. They'd play our 4 seed. Yeah, we're thinking that might be Georgetown with Cedar Park win tonight. Gripping Springs clinches second at 11 and 4. They would clinch. They would play our 3 seed, which would be either Liberty Hill or Rouse. Buda Johnson's 10 and 5, currently in third. Alamo Heights at 9 and 6, a game back of them, currently in fourth. Two teams, one game back of uh, Alamo Heights, Lehman and Bernie Champion at 8 and 7. So any of those final three teams, Alamo Heights, Lehman, or Champion, could finish number four. All right, we'll look at the starting lineups here. Chris Wohl going over for the folks in the stands. For the visiting Georgetown Eagles, leading off at catcher Zach Meza. Batting second at second, E.J. Davis. Batting third, right fielder Landon Heil. Batting fourth, first baseman Reese Bell. Batting fifth, third baseman Logan Smith. Batting sixth, the D.H. Riley Leininger. Hitting seventh at short, Wade Denton, a good one. Batting eighth in left field, Ty Klaus Kizamore. Batting ninth, center fielder Andon Petty on the mound. Jacob Haddon. And here is Chris Wall with the Cedar Park starting lineup. Batting second, shortstop number 24, Julian Swift. Batting third, number 19, catcher Louis Alonzo. Batting fourth, number 25, pitcher Adam Vaughn. Batting fifth, number 21, center fielder Christian Pickens. Batting sixth, number 22, left fielder Houston Molinaro. Batting seventh, number 26, first baseman Jackson Harvey. Batting eighth, 
Designated hitter number 16, Murray Robinson. He's batting for number 15, second baseman, Quint Mullen. And batting ninth, number five, third baseman, Ethan Becker. Our subs tonight are number two, Ian Garcia. Number three, Austin Garcia. Number six, Tyler Clifton. Number seven, Carter Wool. Number 11, Brooks Dillman. Number 12, Caleb Rhodes. 13, Brady Richardson. And number 23, Logan Mose. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I ask that you please rise and remove your caps and point your attention to right center field where our flag is. And tonight, the singing of our national anthem by Miss Amy Harvey. Yeah. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets were Amy Harvey with the National Anthem, which has become a tradition this season here at J. Severe Field at Matt Ariano Park, Cedar Park and Georgetown. Two top 20 teams, and I tell you what, talk with some folks before the game tonight down there, coaches and knowledgeable fans, if these four teams hadn't been beating up on each other, they would all be top 10 teams. Liberty Hill, Rouse, Georgetown, Cedar Park. Cedar Park had closed the deal on a couple of uh, games they had won against very good teams, like Georgetown, like Corpus Christi Ray, like the second game against current number one Lubbock Cooper after they'd beaten them in the first game. Cedar Park very well might be number one themselves. When they are on, when they bring their A game with top pitching, defense, base running, and hitting, they play like a number one team. They will need that tonight because Georgetown plays well. Here's the starting lineups for those of you keeping your own cards at home. Once again, for the Georgetown Eagles, Mazoc, Davis, Heil, Bell, Smith, Leininger, Denton, Klaus Kissamore, and Petty. And for Cedar Park, Davis, Swift, Alonzo, Vaughn, Pickens, Molinaro, Harvey, Robinson Becker. You can see Adam Vaughn warming up his numbers. 40 innings pitched, seven appearances, all starts, a 5 0 record, giving up just 34 hits in seven games. 21 runs, 13 earned, walked 19, struck 46, second on the team to Davis. Hit five guys, an ERA at 2.27 coming in tonight. Right at the team ERA at 2. Two, three. We're a little over. So here is Zachary Mazok. First pitch. High and outside. And we are underway at 7.02. Let me change the scoreboard data block for you. Pitch outside again. 2-0 to Mazok. Adam working with a lot of Pace, this is called strike one. Two and one to Meza. Again, we'll keep pitch counts for you, balls and strikes. How many times guys start 0 and 1 versus 1 and 0? Ooh, that caught the outside edge. Ump missed it. Three and one. Remember, 77% of guys who get on base for free to lead off an inning in high school baseball score, and that guy just became a 77%er. Not how you want to start.
So E.J. Davis, the second baseman, comes to the plate. Was Vaughn pitching to Louis Alonzo behind the plate. Defense behind him in the infield. Third to first, Ethan Becker, Julian Swift, Quint Mullen, Jackson Harvey in the outfield. Left to right, Houston Molinaro, Christian Pickens, and Cade Davis. No outs, one on for the second baseman, E.J. Davis. Shows bunt, pulls a bat back, takes a called strike one. Right field, Olandon Heil is on deck, and the first baseman, Reese Bell. Unless we can induce Davis here to hit into a bases cleaning DP. Shows bunt again, pulls the bat back, that one low, one and one. Well, warms my heart. Chris Wohl and the folks here gave me a little mention in the pregame announcements to the stands here about having done 300 games in this, the 15th season. Cedar Park Baseball. There's a called strike, too. Still showing bunt. Pulled his bat back on all three of them. We are tying a broadcast record tonight. This is our 27th game to broadcast this year. That ties the first year we did it, 2008. For the most ever in a season, fouled in the plate area. Still one and two to E.J. Davis. The reason we had so many that time, until this year when we've done every game, we really only did the district games, an occasional non-district game embedded in the district schedule, and all the playoff games. So the reason we did 27 that year was a long five-round playoff run where all the series went to the full three games. So it's 15 playoff games. Ended in the regional finals. That one misses two and two. So we did 27 games that first year. Not gotten too close to that since. I think 22 might have been the highest outside of that until this year and this game tonight being 27 again. So we'll break the record the first playoff game whenever that is, wherever that is. Swung on the ground, through the middle, into center field, and a single for E.J. Davis on a 2-2 pitch. Pushes Mazok to second. Adam doesn't have to worry about the no-hitter anymore. Here's Landon Heil, the right fielder, third hitter. Also a right-handed hitter. No outs, runners at second and first for the Georgetown Eagles. He shows bunt as well. A high bunt, but it's going to be foul. Third base side, 0-1. Two of the three batters now to face Adam Vaughn, who started off 0-1. O one to Landon Heil. Vaughn from the stretch checks second base for a while. Steps off. Zachary Mazok out there at two. Decent but not spectacular lead. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a line drive over the shortstop's head. That will load the bases with no outs. Mazok to third. Davis to second. Timberwolves right away making it hard on themselves. Now batting for the Eagles, number 25, Reese Bell. Clean up hitter to the plate. First baseman Reese Bell, obviously a dangerous man to have at the plate with no outs and the bases loaded. Well, you know, turnabout's fair play. Georgetown beat a crud out of, or Georgetown had the crud beaten out of them up there for most of the game. And Somehow scrapped back and won it. We might have to do the same thing here tonight. There's a nice curveball for a called strike one. After starting Mazok out with a ball, the last three hitters have started 0-1, but previous two have got singles back through the middle. Swift with a nice jump, even though it was well over his head, to kind of hold the runner and keep him from thinking he could go around third. Didn't matter here. Vaughn hits Reese Bell. Forces in a run. Heil to second. Davis to third. Mazok scores. It's 1-0 Georgetown. Still no outs.
Coach comes out to talk to the pitching batter. And talking with Adam Vaughn before the game, he seemed determined, said he was ready, was confident. But a walk, two singles, and a hit batter. We haven't gotten anybody out yet. Here's Logan Smith, five-hole hitter, third baseman. None of these folks did much offensively in that win in Georgetown. That was mostly a comedy of Cedar Park mistakes and errors. On the ground, back through the middle. Shortstop grabs it. He'll backhand to second for one out. Runners are at the corners, and another one scores. Throw to third, but not in time as he dives back in. So Davis scores from third. Heil to third. Bell is out on the 6-4 at the bag at second. Logan Smith is aboard on the fielder's choice at first and has an RBI. The D.H. Riley Leininger, six-hole hitter, to the plate. Let's update your scoreboard. One out, two to nothing. Pitch high and out. Strike zone's going to get smaller as Vaughn struggles. First guy since the first hitter to start out 1-0, but that stat has not meant anything tonight. Usually it's very important. Right down the tube for a called strike one. Umpires on all three bases tonight and, of course, behind the plate. Yes, they're tuning up for the playoffs as well, which begin next week, Friday and Saturday, the by-district round. No idea who any of our district's teams will play yet. Swing and a miss by Leininger, one and two. Cedar Park must answer in the bottom of the inning. It's a throw to first, our first of the night. We'll track that one, too. Remember, one out of every seven throws to a base by a pitcher or a catcher at a base runner in American high school baseball gets thrown away. There goes a the runner from first. Swing and a miss. Leininger is down. Smith gets second on indifference. And there are two outs. Shortstop Wade Denton. Seven hole hitter with two outs and runners at the corners. Swing and a miss at a very high one, not a well-advised swing. Cedar Park will have Davis, Swift, Alonzo, Vaughn, Pickens, Molinaro at the plate in the bottom of the first. Hope at least those guys. There's a nice pitch for a called strike two. I remember Denton being a very good shortstop in the field when we played them up there. Anything that went to him was just an out. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts to end the inning, so a nice comeback performance-wise for Adam Vaughn, but they send seven and score two on two hits, a walk, and a hit-by-pitch to the middle of the first inning. Georgetown, two. Cedar Park, nothing. We'll be right back. Bussy Roofing understands how important your home and business is to you and the significant investment involved for quality roof installation. As a reputable and professional roofing repair contractor, Bussy Roofing offers years of experience that includes a complete and comprehensive range of roof services that are designed to enhance curb appeal, provide energy efficiency, and increase the value of your business or commercial property. That's Bussy Roofing, Cedar Park Roofing, Roof Repair, and roof restoration. Visit them at bussyroofing.com. Looking at pitch counts for Adam Vaughn in the first, he threw 23 pitches to seven batters, 15 strikes, eight balls, had two strikeouts, two hits, two runs, and a walk and a hit by pitch. Results not all that good. Strike to ball ratio very good, right at that two to one ratio you like. So to the bottom of the first now. Cedar Park will send Kay Davis, Julian Swift, and Louis Alonzo. I apologize for the loud music in your ear. I can barely hear myself talk. 
Seems louder than usual here tonight. I think that's something we need to do differently here. People have told me they can't even carry on a conversation in the stands. We've got the volume turned up way too loud. So here's Davis. His numbers on the year. 92 plate appearances, 78 at-bats, 29 hits, 24 singles, 3 doubles, 2 triples, 14 RBIs, 11 runs. He's been hit once. Walked 13 times, struck out 5 times, hitting 372. On base at 467. First pitch to call. Ooh, it was a great pitch. Should have called it a strike and didn't. Thank you very much. Swift on deck, Alonzo in the hole. And that one was inside, maybe even a little bit high, and he calls it a strike. So we're one and one, and that's where we should have been. Strike should have been called a ball. The ball should have been called a strike. Outside. Two and one. Again, I'm going to have the Gmail account up via the gmail.com tonight. On the ground, past the third baseman into shallow left. Made a diving try, went off the very end of his glove. That's a single for Cade Davis. Now batting for the Timberwolves, shortstop number 24, Julian Swift. Like Bring Swift to the plate. Julian's numbers at the plate this year. 82 appearances, 66 official at-bats, 18 hits, 11 singles, 3 doubles, 1 triple, 3 home runs. I'm looking at the wrong guy. This one, a one bouncer to third. They'll go to second. And across to first for the double play. It's Logan Smith to E.J. Davis to Reese Bell to retire both Davis and Swift in one play. A 5-4-3 double play. So two outs, nobody on for Louis Alonzo. Takes the first one for a called strike. Cedar Park doesn't ever seem to do anything anyway but the hard way. That one's low, one and one. Have to get those crash card paddles ready for us again tonight. Almost hits him way inside, two and one. couple messages will stay here in the break and read them. Swing and a miss for Louie 2-2. Two -two. The pitch swung on and lifted to left. Appears to draw a beat on it and does. Ty Klaus Kissimore. Catch a fly out to left for Louis Alonzo to end the inning. Cedar Park no runs on a hit. No errors. No men left aboard. A 5-4-3 double play saw to that. We're going to keep it here for a moment. Read the two messages I got today. Let's see. Richard Harvey, best of luck. Winning your last district game and securing your second consecutive district championship tonight. Go Timberwolves. Watching the last regular district game from Jay Seville Field Bleachers. Grandparents Richard and Rosalie Harvey. That's one way to do it. Let's see. We had another one from Ann Pickens. Christian Pickens' grandma watching from Monroeville, Alabama. And Ann has been watching all year. A very loyal fan. Good evening to you, too. Ann Pickens from Monroeville, Alabama watching tonight again. All right. Continue to send it tonight. I will be able to monitor tonight. Cedar Park trailing after one complete now. Two to nothing. About to go to the top of the second with Georgetown at the plate. They will be at eight, nine, and one in their order already. Adam Hall started the inning precariously. A walk, a single, a single, a hit batsman. Then he induced a ground ball for an out. And then two strikeouts. Wish he'd started the inning that way. But that's baseball. Here's the left fielder, Ty Klaus Kizamore. Center fielder Andon Petty is on deck in the nine hole. Then back to the top of the order was catcher Zachary Mazel. 
Adam on the ground to Swift at short. Throw takes him off the bag. Oh, my goodness. We need to appeal that. Jackson Harvey certainly tagged him. We'll need to appeal that. He tagged him pretty hard, too. The umpire at the base apparently missed it. There come talk about it. Four umpires now talking about it. Oh, they can they they hold with the bad call. So Ty Klaus Kissimore reaches on the EU error on the umpire. Now batting number sixteen. And in Petty. Center fielder steps in. Nine hole hitter with what well not with one out. No outs and one on. This pitch misses outside and low, one and oh. There have been a lot of missed calls by umpires in the field this year, both working against us and working for us. You just need them to get it right more often than they do. Balls and strikes, you know, you can complain about judgment calls there, but those are judgment calls when a guy slaps a guy on the back and the all the umpires appear to miss it. Two and zero now as as uh, Adam Vaughn resets on the mound. Shows bunt, pulls the bat back, rings him up anyway. Two and one. This will be the twenty eighth pitch of the game already for Vaughn. He's a horse, though. He's gone well over 100 before. Bunted. High one. Picked up by Alonzo. No time to get it. He couldn't get it on the first bounce. So a bunt single for Andon Petty. Georgetown's offense continues to vex Cedar Park. Two walks, or after a walk and a hit by pitch, a bunt single and two honest singles. Then an error on the umpire and a hit by pitch. They've had seven of their first nine hitters reach base. Everybody who didn't strike out. So Ty Kizamore at second. Petty at first. Top of the order. Bunts foul. Third base side. Zachary Mazak 0-1. Walked and scored the first time up. Folks, I'm really tired in my 15th season of Cedar Park in a position to win district titles and somehow managing to lose the last game and Georgetown wins district instead. This is not the first time that possibility has existed. It's not even the fifth. That one fouled out of play, 0-2. Cedar Park in a two-run hole, working on more. Cue ball foul into the net, still 0-2 to Mazok. They need to be getting everybody out and getting base runners themselves. On the ground at third, and it's through his glove. Base is loaded. Mazok lives on the E5. Ty Klaus Kissimore goes to third. And in Petty to second, and once again the bases are loaded with no outs. EJ e. Davis, second baseman, steps up. He singled back through the box last time up, and later scored their second run. Cedar Park needs two strikeouts and then just an out of any sort. Unfortunately, the two guys need to strike out have their only two hits. Well, they did have a bunt single a minute ago as well. Called strike one to Davis. This one back through the middle. Julian to second on the pitch. Gets the out. But another run scores. Kizamore from third. It's 3 nothing. And in Petty goes to third on the play. It's Mazok who's out on the 6-4. EJ Davis reaches on a fielder's choice. He's at first. Right fielder Landon Heil, who singled up the middle and was stranded at third in the first inning, is up. 
three nothing. Pitch is outside and he calls it a strike. A favor call. Thank you very much. I've had about the same number of disagreements, balls and strikes on the average each game this year than any other year. But man, there have been a lot of bad calls by umps in the field. The runner goes and they throw it for some reason. Runner goes from first. They suckered us into that and scored the tie and run up in Georgetown. You never throw down on that one. Throw didn't have a chance. It went 15 feet wide of the bag towards right field. So Davis gets second. Petty scores. Runner at second now. Four to nothing. That pitch misses two and one. That one on the ground. Mullen at second. He'll go to first to Harvey. Gets the second out there. E.J. Davis moves to third on the play. Now batting for the Eagles, number 25. Runner at third. Two outs for the cleanup hitter, first baseman Reese Bell. Bell was hit by pitch first time up and was cleaned off a second on a 6-4 play. Two runs in both innings now for Georgetown. That can't continue. That's a 14-run game. We won't get to seven innings. That would be a 10-run game. That was a called strike, 0-1. Oh Foul out of play to the right side, 0-2. Oh strike away from getting out of the... This without any further damage done. That was already the 40th pitch of the game for Adam Vaughn. Swing and a miss, and he gets him. His third strike out of the game. It ends the inning. But not for Georgetown. Sends six more to the plate. There's one hit, an error on the umpire, an error on third. And they score two more runs. Down four to nothing to an inning and a half. We'll be right back. Sentex Material Handling is a family-owned and operated business located in Central Texas. Since 2011, they've supplied outstanding commercial equipment and industrial solutions for businesses throughout the Southwest. They pride themselves on the reputation they've established over the years. Whether your company needs industrial cranes, conveyor systems, a turnkey material handling system, or various storage equipment options, Sentex Material Handling is a one-stop shop with step-by-step -step consultancy before, during, and after every project to ensure they meet any and all of your business needs. Sentex Material Handling looks for to working with you. All right, welcome back. Matt Ariano Park, Jay Severe Field. You can use either of them or both. Campus of Cedar Park High School, the district championship game in Cedar Park has not yet showed up. It was advertised for a 7 o'clock start time at 727. No sign of the team I know so far. Down four to nothing. Georgetown, they are the visitors, but they have already sent uh, 13 batters of the plate. We've sent three. We're at four, five, and six in the order. Vaughn, Pickens, and Molinaro. Here's the pitcher, Adam Vaughn. On the inside edge, 0 and 1. Fans thought that was two inside. Ours did, but I think it was a strike. Vaughn comes into the game hitting 467. Boy, we could use all these averages to ring true tonight. That one's inside, though, and a little high, 1 and 1. Christian Pickens on deck. Houston Molinaro in the hole. Swing and a miss. One, two. On the ground, third baseman scoops it across the diamond. A great play by Logan Smith, his second of the night, to Reese Bell for the out. One down, nobody on for the five-hole hitter, center fielder Christian Pickens. Allow me to 
Well, going to update the scoreboard data for you in the bottom of the second. One down. Pickens. Pops it foul. Christian into the game hitting 339. Once again, we could sure use that 339 to ring true tonight. Sun getting a little closer to setting. It'll set somewhere like 812, 813 tonight. That one low, one and one. Not really in any of the players' eyes. Way off of foul territory to the, to the right. It's in my eyes when I look at my laptop. Inside. Two and one. Now the Georgetown fans wanted that one, but that almost hit his chest. Two and one to Pickens. Houston Molinaro on deck. Jackson Harvey in the hole. That one outside. Three and one. First Cedar Park batter to go to a three ball count against Jacob Haddon. Threw just ten pitches in the first inning. Six strikes. This little blooper to the third baseman. The one hopper, I should say. Not too high to handle, though. Another 5-3 play. Four of our five hitters have batted the ball at the third baseman. Two down for Houston Molinaro. Came in hitting 306. Please. Left-handed hitter, our second. K. Davis being the first one. This one back through the middle. A single. Second hit of the game and six batters. Team average of 333 for the game. Two outs single. Nobody on, or two outs with one person on. Molinaro at first for Jackson Harvey. Comes in hitting 273. A lot of long distance shots, including three homers this year. That'd be nice right here. They'll throw to first. Their first. Nothing doing. Well, oh, narrow, not even particularly a good lead in that case. Left-handed pitcher, too. It's harder to get a great lead over there. There's a nice pitch. Ooh, that should have been called a strike and wasn't. He said umpires making mistakes both for us and against us. It's happened all year. Throw again to first. That's two. Glad you're with us tonight. Weather's good. If you can keep your heart beating through a four-run comeback, come on down here to the ballpark, however. It's always a lot more fun to watch live than to watch it on, my, on your screen with my voice scratching in your ears. Harvey's still waiting his 1-0 pitch. Here it is, and he hits it hard but foul to the right side. Would have not gone over, but it would have been a one-hopper against the wall if it stayed fair. One and one to Jackson. Four of the seven hitters for Cedar Park have started out 0-1 against Haddon. This one's taken. A little bloop out behind the shortstop. And it falls. And rounding second, running with two outs. And sliding in safely to third is Houston Molinaro. Runners in the corners of the two-out bloop single by Jackson Harvey. Heads up, running by the speedy Molinaro. He's going on contact since there were two outs. Big Murray to the plate. The D.H. Robinson hitting 268 on the air. The clutch rally starter on the road the other night at Rouse. First pitch is a called strike one on Big Murray. 0-1. Oh Cedar Park's got to get that zero off the scoreboard right here if they think they got a chance to take this game. Well, I don't know. Georgetown was down a lot more than this a lot later than this against us and managed to win, so maybe we don't. That one misses 1-1. One, one. High chopper to second. He'll grab it and go to first. Run crosses the plate, but on a third out, force out. Cedar Park is shut out in the inning, even though they have two singles. 
two men left aboard. Still trailing 4 nothing. We'll be right back after this. Chances are, whether you were born and raised in Central Texas or just moved to the Austin area, you purchased a vehicle from the Cover Auto Group or know someone who has. Since 1909, with the opening of the first automotive dealership in Central Texas, Cover has taken pride in maintaining its position as Austin's leading auto group, now operating under its fifth generation of family members. With over 14 franchises in seven locations, Cover continues to provide an unmatched total vehicle experience for the surrounding areas. Come to Cover for your Cadillac, Buick, or GMC automobiles. Welcome back, Brad Cohn here. Jay Severe Field, District Championship game of District 25 5A, Georgetown at Cedar Park. Over the years, when these two teams are in the district, almost all the time, one of them wins the title. It's rarely been anyone else. I remember Rouse winning it once. Gosh, who else? I think Leander won it once. In about the last 10 years, it's always one of these two winning it. One of these two is going to win it again tonight. Top of the third now. Three, or five, six, seven in the order for the Georgetown Eagles. Here's third baseman Logan Smith. Slices a single into right field. One, two, three, wait a minute, one, two, three, four hits for them, three hits for us. Riley Leininger, the DH, struck out the first time up. This one misses low, one and oh. Shows bunt. It's going to be fair territory, and they'll throw him out at first. He goes across the third, but there's nobody there. Nice try. A good dive by Quint Mullen. Takes the throw on the run from Harvey. Mullen coming way up to play the bunt. He just had known he didn't have to because Alonzo fielded it. So Logan Smith goes to third from first on the play. Leininger out. Great throw by Louis Alonzo on the tempted bunt. This one gets through, and the run will score. Five to nothing. One and oh the count on Wade Denton, who struck out swinging at an 0-2 pitch the first time up. So past balls. Score a run that just luck allowed goes from first to third on that play. We didn't have anybody at third and to throw over there to the retreating Ethan Becker almost got him anyway with a diving tag. 1-0 the count to Wade Denton with nobody on now. This is a called strike one. Update your scoreboard. We've got one out. Hoy score now at 5 nothing. Swing and a miss. 1-2. Digging a deeper and deeper hole are the Timberwolves. They don't make things easy on themselves. That one inside, two and two. Three and two, the count. First full count of the game for any batter on either team. Wade Denton, the shortstop for the Eagles. Need to strike him out again, and they did. Nice piece of pitching there by Vaughn to get him. Third strike out of the game, two of them are shortstop Denton. Left fielder Ty Klaus Kissamore, he's the one who got tagged out at first and the umpire missed it. End up scoring a phantom run. 
Line drive right at the short of the Cedar Park <laughs> dugout. Scatters a bunch of people. 0 1. Two strikes away from getting out of this without any further damage. It's a drive into left. But Houston Molinaro's speed tracks it down rather easily. So 1 2 3 after the leadoff single. Unfortunately, they scored a run anyway. 5 0. Georgetown, after two and a half, we'll be right back. With ASI Protection Services, it's always safe. It's that simple. ASI Services provides commercial and residential alarm monitoring services. ASI does the install and monitoring for way less than the large security chains. They've been in business for 21 years. ASI also offers home automation services, repair services for access control, alarms and CCTV, plus security camera installation and repair. That's ASI Protection Services. Call 512-467-2615. As we look at pitch count for uh, Adam Vaughn, 52 after three complete. Giving up five runs, has three strikeouts. Giving up only four hits, has hit a guy, walked a guy. 36 strikes, 16 balls ahead of that desired two to one strike to ball ratio. Their guy, 26 pitches. Through two innings, 16 strikes, 10 balls, giving up three hits, but no runs. Jacob Haddon, and he is back on the mound for his third inning of work. Cedar Park will be at 9-1-2. and two. Ethan Becker, Cade Davis, Julian Swift. Five, so here's Becker, comes into the game hitting 383. Good Lord, do we need those bats to come alive. We're in a good spot in the order. The next several hitters, 383, 372, 420, 411, 467, 339, 306. Seven hitters in a row, 306 or better. Good pitch right down the pipe for a call strike one. But you gotta be seeing them right, making good decisions at the plate for those batting averages to mean much. That went a little low. 101. Davis on deck, Swift in the hole. Cedar Park needs multiple runs right here. And needs to keep them from continuing to pull away in the top of the inning. Called strike two. Ethan Becker with the one two. On the ground, through the middle in the left field, or right center field. So four hits in the first nine hitters for Cedar Park. That's more than they had. However, they're scoring and we're not. That's baseball. Cade Davis, top of the order, came in hitting 372. He singled to the left side, but was part of a 5-4-3 double play at second base. They'll throw again to first. Third time. Back with no problem. Wow, the Georgetown fans thought that... They were thinking that should have been an out. No, he's back easy. Plenty of time. Nowhere close. Another throw. No closer that time either. They didn't say anything this time. And that's throw number four. Getting close to the magic number of seven. Pitch outside. 1-0. and oh. Davis took an outside 2-1 pitch last time between third and short in the left. This one fouls into the net out of play left side. Kind of glanced off the net and went through. 1-1 to Davis. This one. Lands in left center field. Davis two for two tonight. A pair of singles, both to the left side. Moves Becker to second. Fifth hit of the game in 12 batters for Cedar Park. 
Here's Julian Swift, comes in hitting 420. He hit into that 543 base cleaning double play in the first. We need Cedar Park to get about 18 hits tonight. Strangely, if Swift gets one here, we're already a third of the way to that total, but still no runs. We need to get base runners aboard through other means, too, just like they have. Julian calls time. Our five base runners all got on board through honest singles. Besides their three hits, one of them just a bunt single, four hits, one of them just a bunt single, they've also got a walk, an E5, a fielder's choice, a hit by pitch, another fielder's choice, and an error on the umpire. Swift, and that one lands. They're going to hold him at third. Bases are loaded for Cedar Park. Three singles for the Timberwolves. Just what the doctor ordered here to open the top of the bottom of the third. So it's Davis at second. Becker at third. Swift at first. All of them aboard with singles. Six hits in the game for the Timberwolves. Louis Alonzo to hit. And out comes Jason Vieira and brings in his whole defense Whole infield defense and his pitching battery to talk this one over. No outs. Bases loaded for Cedar Park for a change. Alonzo at the plate. Three hole hitters hitting 411. We'll look at some of the things that he has done. He's got 30 hits. Second on the team to Swift. 26 of them are singles. Three doubles, a triple. 17 RBIs is second on the team to Swift. Or, excuse me, third to Swift and Harvey. Uh, he's been hit, importantly, eight times. That happens here. That's a run. Reached on error six times. Reached on fielder's choice three times. He's been on base a lot. A 5'11 on base percentage. Walked seven times. Struck out only six times in 88 plate appearances. Hitting 4'11 coming in. He flied out to left to end the first on his first trip to the plate. This is absolutely huge. Spark has to get more than one of these runners in here. Down five to nothing. Out hitting Georgetown six to five and trailing five to nothing. Baseball is a weird game. Almost hit him. One to no. Missed by half an inch or an inch of hitting his left kneecap. Louis knows how to wear them. The 1-0. Also inside, but that one is erroneously called a strike. That was inside the white chalk mark of the batter's box, and he called it a strike. Pitch lifted. Should have time to get under at the left fielder. It's not going to go far enough back for anyone to tag up. Left fielder makes the catch in very shallow left. One down. Now for the Second time Louis has batted ball. Found its death in the glove of Ty Klaus Kizamore. So one out. Base is still loaded. Got an out to work with here. Don't want to trade outs for runs though. We need to do better than that. Adam Vaughn, the pitcher, came in hitting 467, grounded out to third the first time up. Swing and a miss. That was high and out. Probably should have let that one go. 0 and 1. High, 101. Christian Pickens on deck. Houston Molinaro in the hole. Again, via the T at gmail.com if you want to send a message. Swung on and lifted into shallow right. He comes over. This might be deep enough for the run. Makes the catch. Tags at third. Coming home. Here comes the throw. Not in time. 
At least the Timberwolves have one on the board. Davis also tags and moves to third. Swift stays at second, so a sacrifice. F9 RBI for Adam Vaughn. Scores Becker from third. Two outs for Christian Pickens. But at least the shutout is over. Maybe we can start building on that. Pickens comes in hitting 339, grounded out to third the first time up. Two pop-ups with bases loaded and no outs. It's not good, even though we scored a run on one of them. This one's driven. That's the one we needed. But the left fielder was in very, very close and ran up and caught the ball. So Cedar Park loads the bases with no outs and only gets one of them to score. At least, though, the shutout is over. 5-1 through 3 complete. We'll be back in just a minute. Empire Home Solutions was founded on the principles of honesty, quality, communication, and integrity. They want to help you protect your home. They're proud of the industry they love and bring exceptional details to each job. When it comes to home repair or improving the exterior of your home or business, you can hire any old company or you can hire people who genuinely care about you, people with your best interests in mind, and who educate their customers as well as they perform their jobs. People with a conscience and a genuine desire to do what's right and do it the right way. And that would be Empire Home Solutions at 512-998-3372. Okay, Brad Go, bring you the action here. Game 301 that we have broadcast since starting in 2008. Georgetown at Cedar Park. Trailing 5-1. to one. Georgetown wins. They take the district crown. Cedar Park finishes second. Liberty Hill and Rouse. If both of them win tonight, they're playing lesser teams than so they should. They'll finish third and fourth, or tied for third, and they'll either flip a coin or play it off tomorrow to see who gets the three and four seed. Cedar Park wins. They're the district crown. Georgetown slips all the way to fourth. Rouse and Liberty Hill still have the same situation, but it's seeds two and three instead of three and four they're looking for. Here's center fielder Andon Petty for Georgetown. Their nine hole hitter, one and one the count now against Vaughn. Line drive, fielded nicely by Harvey. He'll race him to the bag and beat him. No, he didn't beat him. He should have gone ahead and thrown it to Vaughn. Looked like he was going to beat it at the last minute, slid, and that slowed him down. An infield single for Andon Petty, who had a bunt single first time up. Sixth hit of the game for Georgetown. They've tied us in the hit count, although they're up 5-1 to one in the runs count. Top of the order with no outs for catcher Zachary Mazok, who walked and scored on on an E5 and was cleaned off on a 6-4 play at the bag at 2. So he's hitless in two trips. As a leadoff hitter though, you know, they're pretty good. Left-handed hitter. Shows bunt. Runner goes. A throw down from Louie is too high. Probably had him beat in time, but it's too high and outside. Stolen base by Petty. Not too many people steal on Louie. Pitch was called a strike on Mazok. 0 and 1. That one outside, 1 and 1. We were just 752 started a couple minutes after 7. We are already in the top of the fourth. Pretty quick moving game. Tapper, two bounces to shortstop Swift. He'll go across the diamond to first. To retire Mazok on the 6-4. The runner Petty goes to third on the play. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 base runners for them. We've had six all on hits. Only half of their base runners have reached on hits. Here's E.J. Davis. Singled and scored. It's on a fielder's choice, and this one is an RBI over the shortstop's head in the left center. Six to one, Georgetown. 
Sound familiar? Sound like what we were doing to them three weeks ago? We got to 7-1 to one before we lost. Which reminds me, losing that one 8-7. to seven, That means they have outscored us 13 to 1 since we led them 7 to 1. This in the air. Second baseman Quentin Mullen seems to be under it and makes the catch. Two down. Update the data block. 13 to 1 we've been outscored by these guys in only six innings since we led them 7-1 to one up there. What is going on? This is a team that lost to Liberty Hill, lost to Rouse. Teams were undefeated against. Runner goes again. This time, throw down in time. It's the tag down. Quint Mullen, another gun down for Louis Alonzo. I need to check out how many people he has caught stealing this year. It is a prodigious number. Certainly the best catcher in the district. So Reese Bell will be back to the plate in the top of the fifth. Oh my God, how did we get there already? Trailing now the Timberwolves. Six to one, we'll be right back. The STEAM Team is a true Austin original. The only locally owned full service cleaning and catastrophe management company in the Austin area. The STEAM Team serves homeowners and businesses with a wide range of services, meeting both routine and emergency needs with prompt, expert, guaranteed service. Founded in Austin in 1983, the STEAM Team has built its reputation on performing beyond expectations with greater professional focus and personal involvement than its competitors. From initial consultation and planning through project management management, catastrophe management, reconstruction, and restoration. The staff of the STEAM team is professional, dedicated, and enthusiastic. That's the STEAM team at thesteamteam.com. All right, looking at pitch counts now. 60 pitches for Adam Vaughn. 42 strikes, 18 ball. The guy's given up six hits and six runs. Walk the guy, hit a guy. Struck out three. We are at 6-7-8 in the order here in the bottom of fourth. That's Molinaro, Harvey, and Robinson. Here's the left fielder, Houston Molinaro. Into the night hitting 306. Had a single to the left side. First time up, but was stranded at third. We've left people stranded third twice in this game, trailing 6-1. to one. First pitch low in the dirt and outside and called strike one. How do you like that? On the ground, second baseman over to his left, grabs it and over to first in time. E.J. Davis, Therese Bell on the 4-3, and there's one down. First baseman, number 26, Jackson Harvey. Jackson Harvey, the first baseman, into the game, hitting 273. He had a single back through the middle the first time up, but was stranded at first. When we left runners, the corners being shut out in the second, high and in, 1-0. Adam coming into this inning, 41 pitches, 27 strikes, 14 balls, giving up six hits, but only one run. Swing and a miss by Harvey, 1-1. One one. Cedar Park showing today that offense is not just about hits. We don't have anything but hits. No other runners reach base any other way. Swing and a miss, 1-2. They got six runners reach base by something other than a hit. And it's a five-run margin. So there you go. That's it right there. Swung on and foul back over my head. Still 1-2 to Harvey. Robinson on deck. Becker in the hole. And we're back at the top of the order with Davis. No more shadows. The sun has set off to the west. Lights are on. Pitch high and out. Actually, the sun has set behind the trees out there. It's still 7.58. Sun doesn't set to like 8.12 but it is set for all intents and purposes. We can't see it. Two and two now to Harvey. Swing and a miss and Harvey's down two away. I believe, yeah, that's a first strikeout of the game by a Cedar Park hitter. It's just baffling how we're losing this game like this. 
Big Murr, Murray Ramos in the DH. Grounded out at second the first time with two outs and nobody on. High and out, 1-0. and Lots of fans for both teams here, as, as there should be for a district title game. This one back through the middle, but the shortstop's got time to catch it right as he approaches second base. So Shearbar goes meekly, and in fact, after loading the bases with no outs in the third, six consecutive batters have gotten themselves out. We'll be right back after this. Thunder Cloud Subs is a neighborhood sub shop with a rich tradition of good-natured people serving fresh, fast, and healthy food in a quirky and fun atmosphere. Founded in Austin in 1975, Thunder Cloud has the simple philosophy of selling a great sub at a reasonable price with superb ingredients. Scratch baked bread, meats, cheeses, and produce sliced fresh every day. All these ingredients come together to create the one and only Thunder Cloud Sub at Four Points and at 700 East Whitestone in Cedar Park. This game on its way to being over quickly. Have not even been playing an hour yet. We've reached the top of the fifth inning of a seven-inning game. Cedar Park at the moment going with a whimper. Can't seem to get people out. They had five base runners in the first, four in the second, one, and he scored in the third, two, and one of those scored in the fourth. They are at 4-5-6 in the order. Here's the first baseman, Reese Bell. He was hit by pitch and cleaned off on a 6-4 play at the bag at 2. Struck out swinging an 0-2 pitch to end the second. Inside this time, 1-0. and Hits him in the elbow. Second hit batsman by Adam Vaughn. And he becomes a 77 percenter, getting on base for free, although his elbow wouldn't say that was for free. Only one walk for Vaughn, but he's hit two. Gonna check him out there with his first base coach as he's walking off. Hit him right in the funny bone. So, you know, he'd say it isn't funny and he'd say it isn't a free base either. And I don't blame him. Baseballs are not light, they're not soft. That's why they don't call it softball. And when Adam Hall throws it, it comes with some heat. So, no outs. Bell at first for Logan Smith, the third baseman. We haven't got him out yet. All with the fielder's choice RBI in the first. Was stranded at second. Singled into right in the third and scored. Called strike one. Three errors on Cedar Park in the game. That really has provided the margin. Shows bunt, pulls the bat back. It's low, one and one. Hit counts are even. Six apiece. That gets away and it go to second. Oh, they're they're saying. What are they saying? Oh, they're saying it was a foul ball. Okay. The runner's going to go back. So the count 1-2 now to Logan Smith. Need the strikeout here. Adams only got three in the game. On the ground in the left field. So Bell is at second. Smith is at first. On base for the third time in this game. He has two of their seven hits. Riley Leiniger, the DH, struck out and had a sacrifice bunt. Vaughn has struck out 46 in 40 innings, a little more than one an inning. 
Only has three in this game over in the fifth inning. First pitch misses, 1-0. and Shows bunt, 2-0. and Well, if we don't come back here, we play the two seed from down there, which I believe is going to be Drippin' Springs. No, we play the three seed, which we don't know yet. There's three teams that could all finish third or fourth. That is likely a home-and-home -home series. This one bunts, foul, third base side, 2-1. Once again, those teams, it could be the three or four seed. Buta Johnson, they are 18 and 9 overall. Alamo Heights is 14 and 14. Kyle Lehman is 15 and 12. Four teams, actually. Bernie Champion is 16 and 10. Could play any one of those four teams if we don't come back here tonight. Any one of those could be the three seed. Pitch from Vaughn is outside, 3 and 1. Don't write them off, though. This team has exploded for runs before. Several times, actually. That's what they'll need tonight. Outside and low is a five-pitch walk with no outs to load the bases. Goodness gracious, we keep digging that hole. So Bell is at third. Smith is at second. Leiniger's at first. No outs for shortstop Wade Denton. And thank goodness he has struck out both times up. We need that again. Here comes Lanny Williams to the mound. Got the Darth Vader music going in the background. Adam, if you only knew the sheer power of the dark side. That's probably not what he said. Force needs to be with us here in these last few innings. I want badly a second consecutive district crown. Probably more than the players do. I've been waiting a longer time. Wade Denton to the plate. Swung at an 0-2 pitch to strike out. Swung at a full count pitch to strike out. This one inside, 1-0. One oh. Wind blowing kind of straight in from center now. Makes all the pitches come a little faster. This one's driven high to left. Molinero will be under it, but they'll tag at third. There's the catch. There's the tag. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. They'll appeal in case he left early. Nobody calls him out. Now, I wasn't paying close enough attention. I know you couldn't see it on the camera because Earl, we've got the camera placed. Umpires are all saying that he's safe. We're convinced that he left early. We're not leaving the bag with that ball. Lanny's coming out to talk about it, too. What we do know is there's an out on a fly out to left, so it's an F7 and one out for Denton. Put that on the board. Lanny's talking to the home up. Got two guys who could have seen it. Lanny seems pretty sure he left early. Man, I wasn't looking. I, I can't confirm or deny this. Of course, Georgetown fans saying ugly things about the coach, throw him out, and that sort of thing. They're not going to change the call, so the run scores by Bell. And guess where we're at? 7-1 to one in the fifth. This is exactly what we had going in Georgetown and lost the game. And it was a kind of sand pounding that this is, too. And we still lost that game. So now it's time to turn that around on them. That would be fair play. Ty Klaus Kizamore, the left fielder, takes the first one low. He lived on an umpire error in the second and then scored a phantom run. And he lined out to left. Takes that one a called strike. And we can't even confirm by film that he left early because we can't really see third base the way we have to position the camera to be able to let you see first where there's more action. 
did not check his swing there, one, two. A strike here makes it two outs. Fouls it to the net. Stays alive. Still one, two for Klaus Kizamore. Get a couple outs here and then start our own massive comeback. And that happened for them at home. Scheduled for the same thing right here for us. That one's low, two and two. Got to get through this inning, though, with no more runs. Smith at second line into at first. Inside. Full count to Ty Klaus Kizamore. A walk loads the bases for the nine hitter. Who's got two infield singles. Throw to second. Only our second throw to a base. They've done that four times. The pitch. Swung on and fouled out of play to the right side. Still a full count. Here comes pitch number eight to tie Klaus Kizamore. How weird that we were exactly where we were when we managed still to lose that 7-1 lead in the fifth inning in Georgetown. This one's fouled again. Here comes pitch number nine. Still a full count to Klaus Kizamore. Need the out badly. And that's over Davis's head in right field. A two hopper to the wall will score at least one. They'll hold the other runner. Eight to one. Logan Smith scoring from second. Riley Leiniger going from first to third. Kizamore with an RBI double. Needed that out. Didn't get it. Eighth hit of the game. Eighth run of the game. Runners at second and third for the nine hitter center fielder Andon Petty. Still just one out. That pitch misses one and oh. It's not the team I have seen all year long, folks. And it's not the team you've seen either. Infield in on the edge of the grass to cut the run out at home with one out and the base is loaded. This one low, two and oh. May not do any good if we don't throw strikes here and haven't put it in play. Fouled back into the net, two and one. Tell you, if we don't make some sort of comeback and at least lose this, you know, with our mouths open roaring, at least, it's a bad way to go into the playoffs. 2 1 pitch from Vaughn. On the ground, it's Swift. He'll come home with it for the force out there. Well, it's not a force out, so he'll take him back to second. And one of those runners is out. They were both on the base at the same time. Well, folks, let's let you watch this rundown between first and between home and third. They'll throw home to get him, and he's out. Goodness gracious, that was something like, I don't know, a six. Two, five, two, five, four, five, two. <laughs> I'm not even mark that down. There's no way to mark that down with scar <laughs> my scoreboard. Let me just say that guy's out. On <laughs> a wild play. Kissamore ends up at second. Petty with a fielder's choice. Or Kissamore's a third. Petty with a fielder's choice. At third, there are two outs. Top of the order with catcher Zachary Mazok. Two outs on the scoreboard now. At least nothing scored. One and oh the count to Mazok. His fourth at bat of the game fouled it off himself. One and one. Seventh batter of the inning. Uh, they sent six in the second, seven in the first. They have scored at least one run in every inning. Six 
17 base runners we were making Georgetown look like a lot better baseball team than they really are. 1-2. Now that loss of a 7-1 lead out there really hurts. This be game would be for nothing. We'd be playing this as the already anointed district champs. That's how much that game cost us. Foul into the net. 1-2. and two. Baseball teaches you a lot of things in life. There's another run with a drive into right field. Rounding third and coming home. Throws up the line. Another two runs are in. Two RBI single into right. Georgetown has opened up a can of whoop stuff on Cedar Park. Chisholm Moore scores from third. Petty scores from second. Still two outs. And it's 10 to 1. We're in danger of being run ruled at home in the district championship game and I don't know if I'm going to write that one even into our history book. Eighth batter of the inning, their biggest. E.J. Davis, the second baseman. Singled and scored. All of the fielders choice strand at third. RBI single and cleaned off a second on a caught stealing. 2-0 and now the count to Davis. One thing I was asking for a few runs ago is just let's not, not go with a whimper here. And we're still whimpering at the moment. Two and one, he steps out. Four runs in the fifth. They had one in the fourth, one in the third, and we thought we were trimming the hemorrhage. Two in the second, two in the first. There's a way low pitch that he called a strike, kind of as a mercy call for us. Two and two. We've only got one run in the third. And the bases loaded with no outs. Only got one. High and in full count to Davis. If he walks him, we go to the... Well, they have batted around in the inning. And they walk him. And we go to the ninth batter of the inning. Only the second walk of the game third rather. Moves Mazok to second. Landon Heil, the right fielder of the plate, singled, stranded at third, grounded out to second, popped out to second. His first three trips. They've only got one guy who hasn't been on base at least twice, and that's Wade Denton, the shortstop. Hadn't been on base at all. First and second. Mazak at second. Davis at first for Landon Heil. This one, another mercy call. That was a foot outside. He called it a strike. Thanks. You know, all the help from the baseball gods we can get at this moment. This moment, this would probably be the greatest baseball comeback in Cedar Park history. That one misses one and one. Oh! Says he went. Thank you. I thought maybe he checked his swing. I won't argue. 0 oh and 2. Fouled left side. Still 0-2. Just a strike away from ending this inning finally. After almost what seems like about a half an hour at the plate for Georgetown. This one's lifted uh, out of play. Uh, actually into the net on the right side. Still 0-2. Little David Pierce comes out to get it. So I'm relatively certain if things don't change here, we don't have a post-game show. Coach will be in no mood for that. Louie chasing this foul. Has a shot. Makes the catch. Nice job by Louie up against the fence on the right side. Maybe just a little play like that can spark something for Cedar Park. We're going to keep it right here. So Georgetown scores one, two, three, four runs in the fifth to go with six runs in the first, second, third, and four. At least they don't get to that dang ten-run margin. Well, we have three outs here and we're done. It is ten to one. 
will go to the bottom of the fifth. Timberwolves have a lot of work to do. Now, all the lamentations, voice tonight, and everything, it's not like Cedar Park can't do this. Can't do a lot of work. Can't explode for a fistful of runs. We've seen him do it several times this year. Look at the scoreboard the other night, the list of scores. and You know, in something like six of the last eight games, they scored in double digits. Well, they'll need two tonight. They have something like 17 or 18 games this year out of 27 where they scored in double digits. So this is an offense that can do it. It's an offense whose team batting average this year is 319. They're not hitting that tonight. Not hitting poorly. They're just not stringing hits back to back to back to back like they normally would. They have not had a hit since opening the third with three straight. Six straight batter outs since we had the bases loaded in the third. We are at 9-1-2 in the order. Here's third baseman Ethan Becker into the night hitting 383, batting a thousand tonight, one for one, and he scored our only run. First pitch misses outside, so not a bad place to start. We are actually the next several batters hitting 383, 372, 420, 411, 467, 339. They gotta do it now though. All of them need to hit. That one misses one and one. They are all due. Well, except for Davis. He's two for two. Next guy up. He needs to keep going. Way high and out, 2 1. Only 54 pitches for their guy as of this moment. I haven't counted Vaughn's, but let me tell you, it's going to be in the 80s. Way outside. Now back. Lead off walk makes Ethan Becker a 77 percenter, and good God, do we need that 77 percent? Cade Davis into the game hitting 372. He's two for two tonight. Hope he hasn't shot the wad so far. Both singles to the left side didn't score either time. Stranded aboard. This one's sliced to the left side, but it's going to find foul territory. Good idea. Would have been extra bases if it was about 15 feet farther right. 0-1 to Kate Davis. All right. Watch these pitches for a moment to keep track. I'm counting Vaughn's pitches for the last thing. It'll take a while. And I see that it hit him. That works too. Davis to first as a hit batsman. Pushes Becker to second. No outs for Julian Swift into the game hitting 420. One for two tonight. Hit into a 5-4-3 double play in the first. Singled up the middle but was stranded aboard in the third. Okay, you ready for this? Might be some sort of school record for Adam in the fifth. 42 pitches. Not through 60 in the rest of the game. He's already at 102. Pitch high and out. 1 and 0 to Swift. Only 36 of the 102 have been balls. 68 strikes. They're going to run. Augie Garcia. Running at second base, number three, Austin Garcia. He's running for Becker. So Garcia at second, Davis at first. One and O count to Julian Swift, no outs. Through the middle. Second baseman grabs it. Steps on two. Goes to one. Second double play that Julian Swift has hit into tonight, and we have no luck at all. That ball was ripped right back through the middle. The second baseman, E.J. Davis, just had him played close to the bag. Baseball guys are just not with us tonight. Louis Alonzo to the plate. Into the night hitting 4-11. Flight out to left and popped out to left. 
Becker did move to third on the play. This one is sent deep to center. After it can't get it. Becker sc or Garcia scores rather. Garcia's runner went to third. And an RBI and a nicely hit ball against the wind by Louis Alonzo, who has tattooed it these last few games, gets himself an RBI. First extra base hit for the Timberwolves tonight. First hit since they started out with three straight hits in the third. There are two outs. Ten to two. Adam Vaughn to the plate. Vaughn in hitting 467. Grounded out to third and a sacrifice fly to right with an RBI. Seventh hit of the night for Cedar Park. They've got nine. Or eight, rather. No, they do have nine. There's a swing and a miss, a strike for Vaughn. One point we had out hit him, I think a six to four at one point. They've out hit us five to one since. That one misses. And that one was just a moment ago. We had a very quiet couple of innings in the third and fourth. One one to Vaughn. Swip swung on and fouled back to the net. One two to Adam. Christian Pickens on deck, Houston Molinaro in the hole, then Jackson Harvey and Murray Robinson. We need all those guys to hit right here. Swing and a miss, and he's down, and so are the Timberwolves in the fifth. They do score one. It's not nearly enough to keep this from being embarrassing. Still down after five complete. 10-2. We'll be right back. Southern Landscape of Austin. Established in 1982, Southern Landscape is a licensed and insured full-service landscape design and outdoor construction firm dedicated to building custom landscape and outdoor living spaces. For 40 years, they've specialized in features like custom landscape design, water features, vineyards, irrigation, hardscaping, patios, decks, arbors, retaining walls, fencing, outdoor kitchens, pools, fireplaces, fire pits, and lighting. Southern Landscape staff is comprised of full-time, licensed, bonded, and insured professionals who are passionate about their work. Call them today at 512-263-8450 or visit southernlandscape.com. All right, some changes in the field for the Timberwolves. A new pitcher is Ethan Becker. You see him warming up. Adam Vaughn has gone to third where Becker was, so a straight swap there. We no changes in the batting order. If we look at Becker's pitching numbers, 21 and two-thirds innings pitched. Six appearances, three of them start, a two and two record of one save and one opportunity. You have 23 hits, 19 runs, nine of them earned, walked eight, struck out 22. That's third on the team. ERA at 2.9. Pitching numbers for Ethan Becker. Adam was at 102. They're wanting to save him for playoff action. Adam gave up. 10 runs, not all of them his fault. Nine hits, struck out three, hit three, walked three. Georgetown at four, five, six in the order, leading off first baseman Reese Bell. He was hit by pitch, stranded, struck out, and was hit by pitch and scored. First pitch called strike one. Adam Vaughn into the game with a 5-0 record on the hook for the loss if we don't come back. That one misses 1-1. One one. Be his first loss of the season. Sliced foul right side 1-2. and two. Georgetown just needs six outs before we score eight runs. Their chances of that are good based on prior performance tonight. And they're still working. On expanding a 10-2 lead. That one misses 2-2. Two and two. The only thing I hate worse than losing a game that gives the other team the district title is this one is flied 
to center and Pickens goes back and gets under it and makes the catch. Nice job by Christian out there tracking that one down. Only thing I hate more than losing a game to a team that gives them the district championship is losing a game to a team that gives them the district championship and takes it from you. And the only thing I hate worse than losing a game that gives the other team the district championship taking it from you is when it happens on your home field. Popped up. Foul territory right side. Louie chasing it. Makes the catch. Two foul out caughts for Louie in the last three batters. Two outs for the D.H. Riley Lyons. This is the first time the entire freaking game that we got the first two batters out. Hopefully it's not too late for that. Lions here strike out, a walk, thrown out at home, a sacrifice bunt. Takes the first one with a called strike one. Called strike on the outside edge. One strike away from a 1-2-3 inning. It would be our first. Nope, way outside, one and two. Very close, a little low, two and two. A little high goes from 0 and 2 to a full count. That's kind of been our luck all night long. There he is, strikes him out anyway. Inning over, one, two, three, we'll keep it right here. Cedar Park in trouble, even though it's a one, two, three inning and no runs scored for the first time in the game for Georgetown. You still lead 10 to 2. Cedar Park's only got two at-bats left. In the bottom of the sixth, they'll be at five, six, seven in the order. That's Christian Pickens, Houston Molinaro, Jackson Harvey. Tonight, those three are two for six, hitting 333. We need a team bat we need a batting average of the rest of our hitters in this game somewhere around six or seven hundred. If we think gosh, probably seven or eight hundred, we think we're gonna win this game. Either that, or we need all this free stuff that George John has been getting. Errors, fielders' choices, hit batsman, walks. We've had one hit batsman. We've had no walks. We need to benefit from that kind of stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. Jacob Haddon had only 65 pitches through five. Where Adam Vaughn was at 102. Now his strike to ball ratio very good, 68 to 36, better than two to one. That was the only good part about Adams' numbers. Not a lot of strikeouts, a lot of free passes, six of them, three hit batsmen and a walk, and lots of runs. Errors behind him have not helped. Christian Pickens comes into the game hitting 339, grounded out to third, lined out to left, so he's been pulling the ball tonight. He's got to be away from people now. Swing and a miss. That was high and outside. 0-1 oh to Christian. Molinaro on deck. Harvey in the hole. Cedar Park needs your juju, folks. Give us your best wishes. Popped up. Playable. Left side. Third baseman. Foul territory. Makes the catch. Logan Smith. And in a lot of outs of Cedar Park hitters tonight. Not good when you got a lot of outs made by their third baseman. Five outs to go for Georgetown. Houston Molinaro, the left fielder, in hitting 306, one for two tonight. Single to the left side, but was stranded at third and grounded out at second. For the three people stranded at third and one stranded at second. Just got those four runs in, at least it'd be 10 to six. Not quite as embarrassing. That one misses one and zero to Molinaro. 
Oh, I did not update scoreboard again for it. It's good curveball for a called strike one, one and one. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Lined one hopper to third. What do you know? We got stop testing that guy out. Logan Smith's pretty good. Two down. Nobody aboard for Jackson Harvey. And this is having more and more the feeling of inevitability. As to the playoffs, we don't know who we will play yet. Obviously, if there's a big comeback, we'll play their four seed. We don't know who that's going to be. And Georgetown will play their one seed. Georgetown drops from first to fourth if they lose this lead. They win district, in the one seed, if they win the game. Cedar Park is technically co-champs of the same record. There's no better record than them in district, even if they lose this. But Georgetown will have beaten them twice. Claims the largest share of the title. Cedar Park would be the two seed. We, we don't know who we'd play yet either. You'll have to check your best news sources to figure out who, where, and when that would be. But whoever that is will bring you the action. Swing and a miss. 1-1 one, one to Molinaro. It's likely a home-and-home home series. In the first round, it usually is. A Friday night game and one game at least Saturday, a second game Saturday right after that if the team that lost Friday wins Saturday. One and two now to Harvey. Eagles strike away, and that's fouled. Strike away still from being one inning away from a district title. Kind of finding myself wishing we had technical problems and were never able to give this one on the air. Swing and a miss, and he is down, and so are the Timberwolves. One, two, three in the six. When they come back in the seventh, they will be at eight, nine, and one. Another word from a sponsor. We'll be right back. With ASI Protection Services, it's always safe. It's that simple. ASI Services provides commercial and residential alarm monitoring services. ASI does the install and monitoring for way less than the large security chains. They've been in business for 21 years. ASI also offers home automation services, repair services for access control, alarms and CCTV, plus security camera installation and repair. That's ASI Protection Services. Call 512-467-2615. So a new pitcher again, spelling Becker as Logan Vokes. Let's look at his pitching numbers as he'll get the last home inning of the regular season. Seven innings pitched. He's made six appearances. No record. Giving up nine hits, five runs, only one of them earned. Walked six, struck out eight. ERA of 1.0. Pretty good number for Logan Vokes. Senior. Might be his last time on the mound here at Cedar Park, unless he gets a playoff appearance in a home playoff game. Let's see what Logan can do against their seven, eight, nine hitters here in the top of the seventh. The shortstop, the only guy we've been able to get out consistently tonight. He is 0 for 3 couple of strikeouts and a fly out to left. Wade Denton takes the first one for a ball. Next one a strike. One and one to Denton. Once again, unless there's a great comeback, not going to be any post-game show tonight. We'll just sign off and we'll see you next week on Friday night in the first playoff game. That one misses two and one. That one misses. Three and one. Last hitters in the order, guys. we got to get these guys out. We are at eight, nine, and one. Robinson, Becker, and Davis scheduled. 
in the bottom of the seventh. There's a good strike. Full count. Wade Denton was our nemesis in the field in that surprising loss in Georgetown. He was a vacuum cleaner. Tonight it's their third baseman doing the same thing. Denton swings and misses at the full count pitch. Third time struck him out tonight. One down for the left fielder Ty Klaus Kizamore. Kizamore, he was the one that was tagged out running to first, and the umpire missed the call, so he scored a phantom run. They really only have nine. They lined out to left, and an RBI double to right, and he scored that time. This one's uh, lifted foul, right side going to be out of play. 1-1. One, one. Davis gave it an honest chase, but wind just kept blowing it. And in Petty on deck. Zachary Mazak in the hole at the top of the order. 1-1 one, one to tie Klaus Kizamore. Called strike two. What a great crowd tonight. They haven't been treated to much. This one inside, two and two. Swing and a miss, and they got him. Two strikeouts and two hitters for Logan Vokes. Maybe we should have started Logan. Eh, you can never tell. Center fielder nine hole hitter Andon Petty. We have not got him out yet. A bunt single and he scored. An infield single to the right side. Stole a base and scored. Then lived on a fielder's choice and scored. He scored three of their ten runs. Nine hitter gets 30% of their runs. That's the kind of night it's been for Cedar Park. No luck at all. Can't get the nine hitter out and he scores 30% of the runs. On the ground back through the middle. Can't get him out still. His third hit of the game. See, they got 10 hits. He's got 30% of their runs and 30% of their hits, and he's the 9-hitter. That's how bad the baseball gods are lined up against Cedar Park tonight. Top of the order was Zachary Mazok, the catcher. Only got him out once. Walked and scored, lived on an E5, grounded out to short. And a two RBI double. Inside and low, 1 0. Outside, 2 0. EJ Davis coming up has two hits and four trips. Also, a walk and a fielder's choice. I haven't got him out either. There are a lot of guys that we have not gotten out at all tonight. That's how you get to being behind 10 to 2. Oh, 30 on the count. Folks start out hot, striking out the first two, then give up a hit, and now 3 and 0 to the next batter. Not much of a lead at first. Here's the pitch. It's a strike. 3 and 1. That was outside and they walked him. Pushes Petty to second. E.J. Davis, the second baseman. Singled and scored. Lived on a fielder's choice and was stranded at third. RBI single to the left side. Was cleaned off. Trying to steal second. Then walked and was stranded at first. E.J. Davis. Made a couple of good plays in the field for the Eagles tonight, too. That has not helped. The Georgetown has played a lot better than they usually do in the field. First pitch is a called strike one. Be nice for folks to get another strikeout here. Next hitter's gotten out three of the four times at least. 
Oh, man, I thought that was high, but it dropped in for a called strike two. Thank you very much, Mr. Umpire. Oops, there are two outs, and I've only got one on the scoreboard. There you go. Swung on and golfed. Third baseman grabs it. Vaughn over in time for the out on the 5-3 play. Nice play at third by Adam Vaughn. So there's a single and a walk. They were both stranded. No runs across in the seventh for Georgetown. Two in the first, two in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, four in the fifth, and then nothing now in the sixth and seventh, which kind of should have been the way it was going all night long. We'll keep it here. Cedar Park at eight, nine, and one. Will they start the greatest comeback in the history of high school baseball? I don't know. It's up to them. They can do it. It's not like that's impossible. It's not like it hasn't been done before. By them, they have scored runs and runs and runs when they've needed to. They need to. They will be at the 8 hole with D.H. Murray Robinson, and he is swinging on deck just out of frame there to your right. Then third baseman, well, now, well, we'll see what happens. Started third, went to pitcher. Now he's out of the lineup in the field, Ethan Becker, unless they moved him to an outfield position somewhere, but he is scheduled to be the second hitter. We'll see if that holds true. Then we're back to the top of the order, order with right fielder Cade Davis. Still Jacob Haddon on the mound. Georgetown sticking with him. He's, he's done a good job. This is a good offense, and he's stymied them. Cedar Park has had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine base runners, seven of them on hits, one hit batsman and one walk. They've had 367 base runners, and it seems like most of them have scored. So Mullen in for Robinson. They pulled Robinson for Mullen. Mullen's been playing second, but hasn't batted yet. They've been DHing for him. He steps in here to start the big rally. Pops it foul. Thank goodness that goes out of play. 0-1 to Quint Mullen. We look at his offensive numbers on the year. 45 plate appearances, 41 official at-bats, 8 hits, 6 singles, 2 doubles, 9 RBIs, 5 runs. He's been hit once, reached on error once, reached on fielder choice 2 times, walked once, struck out 9 times, hitting 195, Quentin Mullen. That one outside, 1-1. One one. Mullen's one of these guys who puts the ball in play a lot. Ends up hitting it at people a lot. It's just kind of bad luck. There's one at the shortstop grabs on a running dive. Just like that. That's the kind of hits that Quint Mullen gets robbed of. It's happened for poor Quint all year long. Call that an L6. One down. Two outs away from a district crown for Georgetown that they frankly probably shouldn't have won. Here's Ethan Becker. Or is it Brady? Yeah, Brady Richardson on the ground of the shortstop. Bad back bounce, but he got the last one and threw it over Wade Dent, Reese Bell. I think that's about to be the first 6-4 tonight. Gets Brady. Top of the order with Cade Davis is the final out of the regular season. Unless we score umpty ump runs here. Davis into the game hitting 372. He's two for two tonight. A pair of singles. It's on as a hit batsman as well, but he's cleaned off a second twice and stranded a third the other time. Fouls the first one into the net on the right side, 0 and 1. Oh, back through the box. It's going to be his third single of the day. Kate Davis at least came to play on offense. Eighth hit of the game for Cedar Park. Is that the start of the greatest comeback in team history? Shortstop Julian Swift, the All-Stater, comes into the game hitting 420. Hit into two double plays and singled up the middle. On the ground, shortstop grabs. He's going to try to throw all the way across the diamond. And he makes the play and the ball game is over. Georgetown takes the district title. 
final score here. 10-2 Eagles. Cedar Park goes to the playoffs. And a note they did not wish to take. We will see you later. We're going to sign off for now. We'll be back for the first playoff game again. Check your favorite news sources. Figure out who we play, where and when. We'll bring that action to you. Good night, everybody.